Hello, my name is Flavia Sorilla Drago and I'm the author and illustrator of this book called Gustavo the Shy Ghost. I am currently working and living in my hometown in Escaposalco in Mexico City where there are many wonderful and colorful gardens. This is my studio where I have lots of books and toys, a record player, a big window, art made by my friends and basically everything I need to create my own picture books. Well, this story takes place in an imaginary town in Mexico during the celebration of the Day of the Dead. During the 1st and the 2nd of November, People remember their loved ones who have died by building altars with their favorite things and their favorite foods on them. These altars, called ofrendas, are very colorful and have different elements like papel picado, cempasuchitul flowers, pan de muerto, candles, water, salt, sugar skulls, portraits and copal to help guide the souls back home. The main idea is to remember the dead and to celebrate their lives by welcoming them into your house again for a couple of nights. Gustavo is a little ghost who enjoys doing all sorts of ghostly things, like making objects fly, passing through walls, or glowing in the dark and playing his violin. He also is in love with Alma, who he thinks is the prettiest monster in town. More than anything in the world, Gustavo wants to make some friends, but he has a little problem. He is very, very, very shy. In fact, he is so shy that none of the monsters in the neighborhood notice him. But one day, Gustavo has a brilliant idea to make everyone see him. Well, when I was a little girl, I was as shy as Gustavo is, so I used to sit alone during lunch breaks and parties and I used to think how easy it seemed for the other children to talk and play with each other. It was a mystery to me. My inspiration also comes from other places like the engravings of José Guadalupe Posada classic monster films, Oaxaca, or my hometown in Escaposalco. This abandoned house is in my neighborhood in Escaposalco, and because of it I thought that it could be the perfect place for Gustavo and his family. I enjoy filling my books with details, references, and things that I like. There are even some childhood doodles because apparently I have always enjoyed drawing skulls, monsters and witches even before I could read. Whenever I start writing a book, the first thing I do is to build the world in which my main character will live. With Gustavo, I made a lot of tiny drawings. I drew the houses inside and outside, the things that he liked, the things that he disliked, his friends, his favorite foods, his parents, his daily routine, all sorts of aspects of his life that I could think of. These were my very first attempts, and as you can see, Gustavo and his friends changed a lot over time. Once I had a lot of sketches, I started editing and organizing the drawings into a story. This was the hardest bit because I needed to choose when to say things with words and when to say things with drawings. Luckily, I have a wonderful team of editors and designers who help me out a lot throughout the process. When I finish the story, I play around with the color palette. I tried different options and combinations to see which worked best. In the end, I decided that I wanted to use neutral colors to give the book a nostalgic atmosphere alongside touches of brightness with orange and pink. 
The orange came from the Sempasuchu flowers on the ofrendas and the pink is a shade that you can see everywhere in Mexico. Flowers, fairs, markets, architecture, clothes and art. It's actually everywhere. And we also have a special name for it. We call it Rosa Mexicano or Mexican pink. Then I needed to do all the final artwork. I did this by using traditional media such as pencils, crayon and ink to make different layers on paper. Then I scanned everything and used Photoshop to color the images. Finally, I sent the drawings to my publishers and with the help of my team, they finished the design and sent it to the printer. And after many, many months of waiting, Gustavo was born. Well, I hope that you have enjoyed this video and I also hope that you will enjoy this book as much as I have enjoyed making it.